Kevin Paul Antunes, ESPN Brazil. Um, with the way LeBron James been playing in the postseason, a lot's been said about him maybe even winning the MVP of the finals, even if his team loses. What's your perspective on that, on a maybe a losing team having the MVP? Uh, I really don't have one on that, actually. Uh, if I'm sure LeBron would If you had a vote, I'm do you sure think? LeBron uh wouldn't accept that. I mean he's a winner. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think he's a winner. I don't look at him as a guy that would be okay with that. Uh, but I don't know, I just wanna I don't know, that I don't I don't even know how to answer that one. <laughs> Robert? Robert Latow, BSO. Uh, one of the things that we've seen in the playoffs are fans uh, being a little bit more bold in how they're approaching uh, players. You had a great game last night. You had a couple of Cavs fans that out by your hotel, you know, heckling you. You know, what do you say to those fans that have maybe been crossing uh, the line and getting in the athlete's face and some of the language that they're using when they're talking to you? I don't think it's crossing the line, I mean, because, uh, I mean, whoever's screaming and heckling, um, at grown men, even after the game, you know, I think that's just pure ignorance. So it's like that's just who they are at that point. So I get it. When the, those guys at your hotel last night, you asked them what did they say. Um, is that something where you're just trying to say, hey, if you're going to say it to me, say it to my face, don't hide it, stuff like that? No, I mean, it was – they were. Uh, I just kept hearing somebody say, K uh, KD, KD, and I didn't hear what they said after that. I just wanted to know what they said. Uh, I wasn't going to do nothing. <laughs> I just wanted to hear what they were talking about. Gary over here. Kevin, Gary Wasser from Boston Globe. Kind of off topic. Just want to get your thoughts on the one and done rule. And um, Great time, man. The, the second uh, question is, your workout with Portland uh, when you were entering the draft apparently blew their minds, but they still took Odin. What do you recall about that workout with the Blazers? Uh, I think the one and done rule should be done. I think you should give players more of a – more avenues to pursue their career as basketball players. Um, if they want to leave school early and, you know, pursue a basketball career, why not? I think it's, you know, it's on them to make that decision. If they if it doesn't pan out, then that's on them. But if it does, I think it's, uh, it's great that you give them a couple outlets to, to do so. Uh, my workout with Portland was uh, – I thought it could have been better when they were saying it was a great workout. I was, uh, I knew it wasn't as great as they were saying, um, but I figured at that point they knew who they were going to draft. They just wanted to just do the due diligence, I guess. Tom, back left. Tom Withers, AP. KD, you know LeBron as well as anyone. How driven do you think he is now to try to bring down this team you guys have put together? And do you think he'll go somewhere else to try to assemble a super team to bring down the Warriors? I have no clue. I only know LeBron from just who he is. Um, you know, and I have a close personal relationship with him, and we never talk about basketball, so I don't know. Over here on the right. Dan Devine, Yahoo Sports. Um, one of the big topics sort of just going around today is the importance of basketball IQ, the, the ability to think the game at the highest level. Um, Obviously, that was an important deciding factor when you made your choice about where you wanted to go in free agency. How does that help at a team level in a situation like this when you're in these high-pressure moments? And you know, what, what have you seen from your team this year as opposed to in years gone by? I think the experience just helps, just going through it. Um, that trial and error is only going to make you a better player. You know, we got a lot of guys that got a lot of experience in the NBA, uh, especially after the playoff run last year. Uh, and then we added, you know, having Nick, an like 11-year veteran who's been through so much, play with some great players. Uh, then you bring in a guy like Quinn who's still, you know, figuring his way out in the league but understands what hard work is, you know. So you just got different journeys for different guys, and they provide it's just a different perspective, and I think that's what makes up a great team. All the way in the back. Kelly Johnson, NBC Sports Bay Area. Uh, Kevin, I was talking to Draymond about just how much he loves – to play defense and how he continues to find ways to Im leave his imprint on the game. Uh, I'm curious, what is it like playing with Draymond on the defensive end of the floor, his intensity, his expectations, his communication? Have you ever played with anybody quite like him? I play with guys with, I play again with guys with that same type of intensity, but his talent and feel is different. Uh, 
Um, his feel for just knowing what what to do is two or three plays ahead. Um, you know, but on a defensive side of the ball, you just want somebody that you can trust and that somebody that you know that's going to go to war with you. And uh, that's something going into a game. I don't even think about with Draymond. I just know it's going to happen with him. And just having that trust and that somebody that you you know is going to be there, you know, you don't even have to worry about that side of it, you know. You can just focus on something else. So it's different when you got to worry about if somebody's going to come to war. Draymond is just always ready. Always ready. I'm sorry. Connor. Uh, Kevin, Connor Letourneau, San Francisco Chronicle. What has LeBron meant to you in your career, and what has it meant to you to be able to face him on this stage for several times now? What he's meant to me, uh, I just think uh, I, don't, I don't know how to. I don't know about that one. Uh, I think somebody that you can always look at, and you know, when you're working out and strive to be better than, and strive to kind of go through the same experiences as you know somebody like that. You know, looked at as one of the top five greatest players to ever play the game and playing in the same era. That's rare, you know, to have a player like that. Uh, playing at the same time you are. So you're watching Tennessee's movements. You're watching, you know, just actions on the basketball court. He talks to teammates. You're just watching it through from afar. And, you know, you try to pick up some things because he's a little older. So I think in that way, just, you know, same thing, same way I looked at Kobe and Tim Duncan and those guys just who are at the elite level who've experienced more, you just try to learn from by just watching from afar. I think LeBron's been a good model when it comes to that. Um but just being able to play against somebody at the highest stage, the highest level, it just brings out the best in both of us. And it just makes the games better. Shelly, Shelly, towards the back. Shelly Smith from ESPN. In what way is this team more locked in right now than it was last year? It's different, man. I keep telling people uh, uh, it's just a different, different vibe. I mean, because we've been through a season with each other already as champions, you know, going through a whole season. So, you know, we know exactly what we need to do um, in order for us to win. And, uh, you know, so we want to do that, focus on that as much as possible. And the emotions and all of that stuff don't doesn't really matter. We just try to play a solid, focused game, and we'll figure we'll f you know figure out how to feel afterwards. Afterwards, you know. So we just try to. You know, it's just it's just different. It's like I told someone earlier. Uh, I think Kanye West's first album is his best one because I ha I haven't heard it. I didn't hear an album from him before. So the first one is always a little different. But he has some great music after that as well. So I feel like we're in that transition from having a great first year, but figuring out different ways to be good in the second year. So if that makes sense. Yeah. JaVale McGee called it a beautiful thing. Oh, definitely. If you listen to Javel, he has all the answers. <laughs> Last two questions on the left side. Kevin Brad Botkin, CBS Sports. Um, Steve talked last night about how decisive you were uh, with the ball. Is that um, a conscious decision on your part going into the game, or is that more how they're defending you and the fact that Steph and Clay were, were both off by their standards? Uh, I just know when I rush, um, I'm not as as good as I want to be. If I take my time and be patient, uh, I can dictate and control everything. So I'd rather control everything than be, you know, reacting to someone else um, out there. So I just try to be as pa patient as I can, as I could, but still, uh, you know, be strong with the basketball. Is that a tough balance to stay patient um, when you know that kind of the longer you do hold the ball or anyone holds the ball for that matter, things do? Bogged down. Is that a tough balance to be patient and decisive at the same time? No, nah, because when we throw the ball in the Draymond, we st we st we still move, we still cut. So I expect the same when I get the ball, and my teammates do that. So as long as I hold the ball, if everybody keeps moving, if I don't find nothing, then I can go to work. Melissa, last question. Uh, Melissa Roland, Barry News Group. LeBron was talking about how the challenge around the league is not only to find a group of guys as skilled as the Warriors, but as intelligent as the Warriors. Um, is intelligence kind of a less appreciated aspect in a locker room? And uh, what's it like being in the Warriors locker room in terms of everybody's collective IQ? Uh, I think as basketball players, we should all be offended if intelligence isn't the first thing you think about when you're looking at basketball players. 
Uh, I compare us to musicians. I compare us to artists, to architects, to surgeons. I compare us to the highest at any field because what we do is hard. We're one, we're one percenters in the world. So when you walk into any locker room I ex in the NBA, I expect you to think that all of these guys are intelligent at what they do. And I think that's a underrated trait from somebody outside of the league, uh, from outside of the locker rooms, because they don't realize the, how hard the game is, I think, sometimes. But, um, you know, it's hard to find intelligence, character, uh, unselfishness all at the same time. And uh, that's rare in any profession, I think. Thank you, Kevin.